Hi everyone, so today we're going to get started with our notes packet on transformations. So you should be on page one. First of all, we're going to talk about what a transformation is. These are going to be on your coordinate grid and you're going to have some shapes and you're going to be moving them in certain ways. So they're going to be transforming from one shape to the next. So the different types of translations or transformations that we have. First one is called a translation. That's a slide of the figure in which all points on the figure move the same distance in the same direction. And something just to kind of point out here, translation, that SL right in the middle, I remember that using the word slide and a translation is a slide. So that kind of helps me just recall what that is. Our next type of transformation is a dilation and that's a transformation that changes the size of the figure by a scale factor to create a similar figure. So some similar words in here that we've seen, a scale factor means we're going to be multiplying by something. And to create a similar figure, remember similar is the same shape, but it's not necessarily the same size. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, also just to keep in mind for dilation, um, different context for that, think about your eyes. When you look into the mirror and you have like some light shining on you, your pupils are going to get smaller, but if they're if it's darker, your pupils are going to get larger. Like when you go to the eye doctor and they give you the eye drops, their pupils dilate. So they're changing size, but they're still a circle. Um, our next type of transformation that we're going to be talking about is rotation. That's a turn of the figure around a fixed point. And turn is that keyword there. And this one's kind of a stretch here, but rotation has T in it and turn starts with T. That might help you. If not, that's okay. Um, our last one here is reflection, and that reflects a figure across a line in the plane. And reflection, another word for that would be to flip. And FL's right in the middle of reflection, so I think of reflect to flip. You're just flipping it over a line in the coordinate grid, usually one of our axes. One other word that you just want to mark down on your paper, maybe up top here, is vertex or vertices is the plural of that. Um, that's just the points um, on a shape. And we're going to be seeing that a lot throughout these notes, so I just wanted to add that. So vertices or a single vertex is the points on, around the shape. So moving down below the page, we have um, some examples of each of these transformations. This first one, we start with the shape A, B, C, D, and then we end with A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. So we're starting with the shape, and then it becomes the same shape, but it's a different size. So that's going to be called a dilation, and this is where the size changes, but the orientation does not. And what I mean by orientation is the direction. So notice this side CD, it's still facing the same way as C prime, D prime. They're both still on the right side of the shape. So it's not being turned at all, it's just changing size. Our second example, we have L, M, N, O, this trapezoid, and then we have L prime, M prime, N prime, O prime, and we have the shape, and it looks kind of like a mirror image. That means it's flipping over to this side, and it's flipping across the x-axis. That's going to be a reflection. Remember, reflect, that FL means flip, and in a reflection, the size stays the same, and the orientation will change. So notice we have it kind of is upside down once you flip it over. Um, so that's going to change the orientation or the direction in which the shape is facing. Now in this third one, we have two triangles, triangle ABC and triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. And these triangles, all they look like they did was just kind of move. They didn't change size, they didn't turn around. So this is a translation and we slid those triangles across the grid. The size stays the same and the orientation is also going to stay the same. So that one, they just kind of slide those shapes right on over. In this last one, here's our first shape, A, and then it turns into A prime. They took this and they rotated it all the way around here. They turned it around this center point, so they took it and they just kind of turned it all around. That's going to be a rotation. And the size stays the same again, but the orientation is going to change on these. So those are just some 
key things to note about each of these types of transformations. So go ahead and move on to page two of your packet. The first type of transformation we're focusing on today is translations. A translation, again, is the slide of a figure in which all points on the figure move the same distance in the same direction. When a figure is translated, every point or vertex of the original figure is moved the same distance in the same direction. It's very important to remember that. So basically you're going to have a shape, say we have this triangle, and we're going to take it and we're going to slide it. So here's our first shape then, and then we have our second shape. So maybe this was shape A, this becomes shape A prime. We use that notation with the little apostrophe and that marks our second um, shape. So this was our original and with these apostrophes it's marking that second um, once we've transformed it. And we say that, like A prime there. So if you want to make a note of that and just draw a little picture. Something else to note while we're here and this is on the bottom right corner of page two. Something to remember when you move right and left on your coordinate grid that's going to affect your x value. When we move up or down, that affects our y value, it's on our y axis. When we move right or when we move up, that's going to mean we're going to add or it's getting bigger. And if we move left or if we move down, that's going to mean we subtract or it's just going to get smaller. So those are just some key things that you want to add into your notes there. Moving on to this example. They tell us triangle ABC has vertices A, negative 4, negative 2, B, negative 2, 0, and C, negative 1, negative 3. Find the vertices of triangle A prime, B prime, C prime after the translation of 5 units right and 2 units up. So that's important to note there. They're telling us direction exactly where they want us to go. So this description beneath here says we're going to add 5 to each x coordinate, and we know that x is being plus 5 because we have to the right, right affects our x value. Add 2 to each y coordinate, when it said up, that's our y axis, so we're going 2 units up, that's going to be adding 2. So here's our original vertices, those are just the points on triangle A, B, C. So we have these coordinates, we're going to take each of our x values and we're going to add 5 to it. So what we're going to do in here, is we're going to put our parentheses, our original x value is negative 4. We're going to add 5 to it, we put our comma, our original y value is negative 2, and then we're going to add 2, and close our parentheses. Negative 4 plus 5 is 1, so we put parentheses 1, and then comma, negative 2 plus 2, that's 0, so our new point A prime becomes 1, 0. We just added 5 to our x value and added 2 to our y value. So again, in case you didn't quite understand that, in point B we have negative 2, 0. So we take our original x as negative 2. We're going to add 5 to it, put your comma, our original y is 0, and we're going to add 2 to that. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3, and 0 plus 2 is 2, so point B prime becomes 3, 2. In point C we start with negative 1, negative 3, we're going to do negative 1, plus 5, and then negative 3 plus 2, so point C prime becomes 4, negative 1. So all of our new coordinates of triangle A prime, B prime, C prime are 1, 0, 3, 2, and 4, negative 1. Now the last part of this example is that we have to graph both of those shapes. So our original shape, I'm going to graph that in pink. So if you have colored pencils or highlighters or different pens you want to use, it would be nice to just do some different colors here. So point A was at negative 4, negative 2. So starting with our x value, we go 4 to the left, and then we go 2 down. So that's point A, and I'm going to label it as point A. Point B is at negative 2, 0. You start at your origin, 2 to the left, and up 0. That's nothing, so we just stay here. That's point B. And then point C was at negative 1, negative 3. That's right here. So that made triangle A, B, C. Go ahead and connect those dots. Then we have to sketch triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. So just take your new coordinates, and I would choose a different color here. Point A prime is at 1, 0. That's right here, A prime. Point B is at 1, 2, 3, and then up 2. That's B prime. 
endpoint C prime is one, two, three, four, and down one, that's point C prime. Go ahead and connect your dots. Mine aren't the prettiest, but if you had done them nicer than I did, you would see that you took that shape and you basically just kind of slid that triangle over. The size didn't change and the points just kind of moved the distance on the triangles are all the same there. So we just took it and we slid it. That's called a translation. So after you graph your translation, you just want to double check, okay, do my triangles look the same as what I started with? If they do, you're good. Okay, at this point I want you to move on to page three and I want you to try this example on your own. So go ahead and pause the video and once you think you've figured it out, you can come back and watch it just to make sure you got it right. Okay, so this problem asked us to find, um, translate triangle EFG with vertices E at negative five, negative two, F at negative two, three, and G at two, negative three six units to the right and three units up. That's another way of writing that is right here, the six, three, our X is positive six, that's mean we're gonna be adding six, and our Y is positive three, so we're gonna be adding three to our Ys. Then it also tells us to graph and label each figure. So our vertice E was negative five, negative two. We're gonna do negative five plus six, and our Y was negative two, we're gonna add three. Negative five plus six is one, and negative two plus three is one, so point E prime becomes one, one. Point F was negative two, three, so we use negative two plus six, three plus three. That becomes four, six. And then point G was two, negative three, so we're gonna do two plus six, and negative three plus three. That becomes eight, zero. So we have all of our points now. I'm gonna go ahead and graph now. So we put graph point E, F, and G. Point E was at negative five, negative two. So we count five to the left and two down. That's point E. Point F was at negative two, three. One, two, three. That's up here. Point F. And point G is two, one, two, negative three. One, two, three. All the way over here. That was our original shape, so make sure you have that sketched. Uh, again, I would switch colors to show your next one. And then point E prime is at point one one, that's right here. Point F is at four six, so that's four over and up six right here. And point G is eight zero, so we gotta count eight to the right and nothing in our Y, so that's G prime right there. Go ahead and connect your dots once you have those graphed. And again, just double check yourself. These triangles look pretty similar there. My lines aren't perfect, but if you take those triangles, if you would have taken that pink one and you slide it over, it should match up and be that same as um, that first one that we had, that pink one. So the pink and the blue are the same size. They're facing the same way. All we did is we slid it across the graph. So at this point, um, go ahead and stop this video and you're gonna be taking the translation formative before you move on to our next transformation.